All right, all right. Um, Dave Ratt, and this is the first video on a series I'm going to do about power, amps, and watts, and how all watts are not created equal, or maybe more accurately, all watts are not delivered equally. Um, you know, the concept of power, I mean, it's very, when we're looking at power amplifiers or speakers, um, you know, it's really easy to have the go-to of how many watts does it handle or how much wattage does the amplifier put out. Um, and we're comparing, we see two amps, they both put out 1,000 watts per channel or 500 watts per channel and uh, 8 ohms. And we say, okay, these amps are going to be uh, the same. They're going to be relatively similar. And um, we can, you know, this one's a little cheaper. This one has some more features and we move on from there. Uh, but in reality, that's not the whole picture. And not only is it not the whole picture, the picture is constantly changing over time. So 20 years ago or 30 years ago, when you looked at the power amp specs and you looked at how many watts it put out into what impedance, that's completely different than the typical amplifier now and how many watts it puts out. Um, not the actual number, but how the watts are delivered and how it's specified. Uh, same thing goes with home hi-fi and car stereo amplifiers. Um, for example, um, to dive a little further into that, let's say that, um, well, let's look at a, um, an analogy of um, car velocity. It takes, let's say you have a car that weighs 2,000 pounds, a vehicle that weighs 2,000 pounds, certain amount of air resistance, wind resistance, certain amount of rolling resistance, certain air in the tires, whatever it is. In order to bring that vehicle up to, let's say, 60 miles an hour, you're going to need a certain amount of power, a certain amount of energy transferred into motion to get this thing going at 60 miles an hour and battle the resistance or whatever it is. Um, now, you can achieve this in multiple ways. One way to achieve it would be to have a big, huge engine and turning very slowly and geared in such a way that at every ro couple rotations, it moves it really far. It's a big, powerful engine moving slowly. Another way, you could put a little tiny engine in there and have it moving very quickly, um, spinning very fast, and then gear ratio down to get it to where it's going. Um, a good example of that is, you know, on an older muscle car, you might be in third gear to get to 60 miles an hour, and on uh, a smaller, you know, inexpensive car, you might be in fifth gear or sixth gear at 60 miles an hour. So the gear ratio, small engine turning fast. Um, the velocity is the same. The power is the same. The watts are the same. But there's other variables. How long did it take to get to 60 miles an hour? What's the acceleration to get there? Um, how long can it maintain? Let's say it goes 120 miles an hour. How long can it maintain 120 miles an hour? Can it just get there for a minute and then it runs out of juice? Does it take a long time to get there? Well, power amps are the same way. Um, how quickly an amp can deliver the amount of power um, is something that I think is underdetermined. And I haven't done a lot of testing, and I hope through this series to um, not only do some testing, but maybe um, find some new and interesting um, ways of looking at uh, how power is delivered and see if we can um, find ways, find any difference between an amp that, say, maybe delivers power very quickly or one that um, delivers it slow. And for example, an example for that, let's say that um, I wanted to push this car with a stick, you know, I had a bowling ball or something that rolls and I want to push it with a stick up to ten, uh, five miles an hour. I'm gonna run and push this thing with a broom, a bowling ball with a broom or whatever it is. Um, if that broom handle is like a yardstick and really long and thin, when I go to push it, that yardstick bends and then it goes and the ball gets up to speed. Uh, but if, the, if I'm pushing with a two by four, you know, the ball gets going right away. 
um, this kind of time lag between when the power is created and delivered to its final destination or drawn from its final destination, um, there could be things that slow that down, um, that kind of bottleneck that energy inside the amplifier or the way the amps are, uh, the watts are being generated. Or that bottleneck could be in the cabling. If you have a long, skinny, um, you know, long, low gauge wire, um, you might be able to get 500 watts at the end, but all that resistance makes it um, uh, unable to deliver a massive amount of power very quickly. Um, let's see, what else do we got? We've got the ability to, oh, how long can it deliver the power? So let's say some, an amplifier puts out a thousand watts per channel. How long can it do it? Uh, modern amplifiers rated at a thousand watts a channel typically don't put out a thousand watts a channel for very long. If you look at the response on an oscilloscope and you measure it, they will come in, peak up, and they'll hit that thousand watts. So you got a sine wave and it'll go up. And then after a fairly short period of time, half a quarter of a second or a, I don't know, 20 milliseconds, I don't know, some will find out the different amps are uh, very different. Um, it'll drop down and hit a lower level. So if we looked at the, you know, it kind of drops down and that drop might be multi-stage. It might be able to deliver a thousand watts for 0.2 seconds and then it, then it trickles down and delivers 600 watts for another 0.2 seconds, and then it delivers 300 watts continuously. Um, and that's just its ability to actually spit out that power. Now, if you look at like an old amp, you look at an old like um, uh, class AB or a class H or whatever, like Crest amps I've done a lot of testing with, you could put it and they'll put out 800 watts and it'll just put it out continuously. Um, but then you run into another problem. How long can that happen? Because not only do you have the initial surges, but then you've got these thermal time frames. If you're putting out 800 watts, will it do it with a sine wave for an hour, a day, a month? Uh, things get hot and into what impedance? There's a lot more heat generated into two ohms, two ohm loads than there is into eight ohm loads. And going even further in that fun complexity, uh, the same amp may have completely different response and uh, delivery of the power at different impedances. So you might have an amp that at eight ohms, it puts out 500 watts per channel. I'll use an old, like a old Crest amp, like um, as, as an example, it'll put out 800 watts and it'll hold that 800 watts into, or 500 watts into eight ohms for an extended period of time. Um, but it doesn't go over it. It might put out 550 watts or 530 watts for a fraction of a second and then drop down to that 500. And there's, the surge voltage is not that much higher than its actual output voltage at eight ohms. But at four ohms, it might be rated at, let's say a thousand watts. Uh, no, it's rated at 800 watts, not quite double the 500. It might be rated at 800, but it'll put out that thousand for a little while and then drop to 800 um, per channel. And then if you go to two ohms, it might be rated at, um, I don't know, say 1200 watts per channel to two ohms. But for a fraction of a second, it might put out the full 2000. And what I'm saying, is because when you cut the impedance in half, you have an eight ohm, puts out a 500 watts into eight ohms. If you go to four ohms, if all things were perfect, it would put out double the power because you have half the load. And uh, if there was no losses involved. So the amount of time, whether it's a thermal issue over an extended period of time or that uh, up close, a momentary surge, all of these have impacts. And then the question comes, what do we really want for the music that we're doing, for, that we're reproducing? Do we really need a thousand watts continuous? If we take a sine wave and put it into an amplifier and put a full thousand watts, yes, that's a good test of how its thermal capacity and its long-term output, but is that even relevant to what we're doing? Because music, even highly compressed music, is five to one or better, eight to one, 10 to one ratio between its average power demand versus its peak power demand. So having an amp that puts out 
burst powers of very high peaks with an average power of one third that or one quarter that um, may be and actually is superior for most applications. Uh, an amp that puts out 800, 500 watts continuous versus one that puts 200 watts continuous but has a 1500 or a 1200 watt peak, instantaneous peak, 1200 watt peak, 300 watts continuous, let's say, versus 500 watts continuous with a 550 peak. Um, the one with the higher peak is going to be noticeably, or should be, we're gonna test it out, noticeably louder, clearer, and more dynamic sounding for um, most music applications. Um, and I'll wrap it up here for today. Um, I think I've got a test method that will allow us to hear some of this. Um, I haven't done it yet, it's all theoretical in my head, um, but if it works as I hope it does, uh, we should be able to run amps at full power and play it back through small speakers. Um, I'll build up a little shunt load, a little um, uh, load that loads down the output of the amp and takes a small percentage of that power and runs it to a little speaker or home stereo speaker or to a recordable signal. And we can start to compare the way the same amp sounds under various loads and the way different amps sound, like an old Crest amp, I've got a Chevin amp, which is a very hi-fi four-channel amp um, that we had in inventory. And then I've got some PowerSoft amps. Um, and I'll see what else I got. So we'll kind of compare new to old and everything against itself. So I'm not really sure all the videos I'll do, but um, I'll start diving in and it should be fun. Let's see. And hopefully out of this, we'll come up with a way to refine what we're looking for in app and be able to look at the specs when they do spec them out properly um, and uh, get a better idea of whether it's going to work for application. All right. And I'm going to get working on it now.